wherever you go in life, always put God at more than enough. Don't place God at no beginning. Don't place God at no ending. Place God before your beginning because he's not your beginning. God is not present. If God is present, then someone can come to fight you. God must be omnipresent. That means before some attack comes, he has already finished the course. Are you there? God is not no ending. He is beyond the ending. So before you finish, he starts a next thing for you. So before you lose a job, you get a new job. Before you start a new job, two other jobs appear because he's omnipresent. Before you get hurt, you get healed because he's omnipresent. Before you are hungry, food already provided because God is omnipresent. Once you make God omnipresent in your life, no dynamics break come your way. No root bell come your way. And every attack that comes to you, you will only see the radiation, but you will never get the attack because God has already been omnipresent in your life. Somebody shout the highest praise. God is able to do the impossible and only the impossible. If it's not impossible, then you do the rest. But what is impossible that you cannot manage, God completed for you. Do you see what I'm saying? God only appears when you can't take it no more. When you can't overcome your backers. When you can't touch the devil. God has already touched the enemy for you. Never feel like your opponent is more dangerous than you. Not because the voice may be too louder. That no mean you are not dangerous than your opponents. The enemy is so cunning in his ways that the enemy will help you the most, but that's the one who is killing you tomorrow. Do you see what I'm saying? You have to be very wise and very smart to survive in this season. Do you understand? You have to be very wise, not just very wise, but you have to wise to the omnipresence. You have to be smart to the omnipresence. Are you there? It's very, very important in your life that you see God as the omnipresent God. The sovereign one. The absolute one, the divine father, the holy one, the, the prince of peace, the, the great provider, the omnipresence God. Are you there? God is not just a healer. He passed healer. He's not just miracle. He passed miracle. He's not just mystery. He passed mystery. God subdued all that man have never named are described who he really is. Are you there? There is some stuff that God done in your life. It's not healing. It pass healing. It passed healing, reached miracle. Then it passed miracle, reached mystery. Then it passed mystery, reached shadows of life. Super mystery that you wonder I see a woman and she said prophet since I come to your church I'm married for two years and I just realized I'm married I just recognize that I'm really married and I'm here for two years her favor that God placed upon her life passed her mindset some of you are working for two years or one year and you just realize you're working because God have subdued, surpass your thinking, surpass your thoughts. Are you there? I want to place a omnipresence anointing upon every one of you. Today, I want to place a omnipresence anointing upon every single one of you. Wherever
wherever you go in life, in all your endeavors in life, I command the omnipresence of Almighty God before you reach the embassy, the council of call the security to send you to look in the line if they see Mars Tamar, if they see Mrs. Jones, because we're waiting for morning to give her the visa. Can she reach yet? Are you there? It's not that people is not in the line. It's that you are the anointing that walk with the omnipresence. So before they call the majority, your name has already been called. Are you there? The omnipresence of Almighty God will continue to flow supernaturally upon your life. The sovereign, absolute, divine, holy, righteous, eternal Father, who a great provider, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Shema, he is here with us. And no weapon that form against us shall be able to prosper. Anytime your enemy calls your heart to start beat, gallop and start running for your life because you, your enemy is not supposed to shake nothing that God placed within you. Are you there? You should be solid like a rock and cold like ice so the enemy know you are not easily to be defeated. In 2017, I have a bishop that I ordained, Pastor, Pastor Esteen, a mighty man of God, but we call him the, the chicken wing pastor. Before he preached, he loved KFC. Are you there? He invited a prophet from Africa. Were preaching in in Brownstone, but he said after he preached in Brownstone, he want to preach to a next church. So pastor asked me if I could let him preach at my church for seven days or five days. I said sure. I don't like to welcome strangers that I don't know, but I just say sure. After he finished the, the prophetic crusade in Burnstone, he headed to my church. Before he come, I asked the condition. He said they don't want nothing. He just want to preach for a couple of days, do God work, and go back home. But all I need to do is provide a little food for him and somewhere to stay. I asked his sister to put him up. When he come, he said he don't stay at people yard. He want a hotel with a pool. I smell trouble. But I still said, since he's here, and we have already tell the people, let's have him. I go at the hotel and I pay for the room for seven days. $8,000 per night. Eight by seven is how much? Plus, every morning I have to leave my wife in the bed, get his breakfast, get his lunch, get his dinner. Then he said he need grapes, he need orange, he need banana, he need papa. I have to get his fruits. The fourth day, the majority of the money come up is on the altar. He pick up the bundle of money and walk out of the church. What is hotel? After I've paid all the bills, the offering have gone. He said he's not going to finish the rest of time, so we say, okay, fine. We bring him back to the airport and he take the money and he go. Now we have a next prophet that we 
Pastor Ferguson no. He's preaching in Portland, so the he said after Portland he wants to preach at the next church. That's the argument I get. So Pastor Ferguson bring him to our church. Advertise that he's gonna be here in Mepen in Maneva. We have no problem. I tell Pastor Ferguson, I've been through it already. I'm not going to go through it again. He said, let us try. The church is under financial difficulty. Do you imagine a church paying 100000 per month for rent? Plus light bill. Plus we have about five staff. 40000 per week for the staff to pay bills. The church looking for a mighty move of God. People come hungry for the word of God. Thought the whole church would be prophesied to. People be healed, deliverance, deli demon will cast out. It's great to see you all out since Sunday morning up until tonight. <clears throat> and we appreciate having the prophet here with us from all the way out of Ghana. As, as was arranged, tonight would have been the last night for Mandeville. However, everyone is disappointed because I got a lot of call from Mepen and the Mepen Assembly is actually looking for him tomorrow night through to Friday night. And some of them have even traveled here since Sunday and from they came in the morning, they're here up until tonight because they're looking forward and they're bringing the news and they've invited out so many persons who are expecting them. Sit down. Let, let me say uh, the hand of those who are from Maypen. Oh. Oh, wonderful. So there's nobody here to stone me. Let me tell you what happened. Um, I'm, I'm the one who should, who should have organized the, the itinerary and give the different persons the dates. I'm not looking out on any prophet because I'm truly a man of God. But all I'm saying if you come to do something good, don't do bad and good, just do good. He come at the first night, he, he prophesy, whatever, go back to his hotel. Then he should come back, then he decide he's not coming back because mosquito bite him. You come out of the car and go in the hotel. I don't know how the mosquito reach in your room to bite you so you're not coming. What a headache. We're not licking out on you. All we're saying, if you're doing something good, just do it straight good. I went to his room. He said, you have a headache. God tell me to tell him to come to church. He come, he pray for the night, and he go back to his hotel. He tell the people at night he'll be in fasting tomorrow, that is yesterday, to continue. Everyone come with a great expectation for a mighty move. Now he said he'd not come into the fasting because he never knew that there was a fasting. Right, it's my fault. It's not Prophet's fault. It's not Bishop Ferguson's fault. It is my fault. I should have corrected things. I've been trying to correct things since Sunday when I got the news that we were double booked. But for some reason, it is kind of, for out of our control, things can't change, right? Because they have already sorted out different... Come on. We pull off that, forgive him again. Then he come in the night. Start to turn off the members. What are you doing down there? You come up here. You're not supposed to... You have to know how to talk to 
God people. They will get turned off and they will not come back to church. Not because it's not your church. You're not going to scatter the people and when you're gone, I'm going to have to fix them back. Set this one against this one and this one against this one. You are a peacemaker. You can make peace. 